I started in 1968, and Central was an awesome school. I mean, we had good fellowship, the athletics. I mean, it was great. We, we never had any issues until what we're discussing today. It was just a, a pleasant day. I think it was sunny. Um, I was going to lunch, you know, right before, before all this happened. Um, but it, it, was, it was a nice day. There was a door at the end of the school at the parking lot in, and it was odd because that door was hardly ever locked. That day, for some reason, it was locked. I was coming from lunch, and I came around the corner when Gerald was firing his weapon. Yeah, and that, that just like, and I, I just froze. I didn't know what to do. And so I was, you know, watching that, and Gerald took off, and, and I think they caught him down on Rotary Drive, just sitting there waiting for the police. But, I mean, that was, I saw David fall, but I didn't approach him because I, I, at that time, you know, 16, 15 years old, I didn't know what to do. So, but uh, I know after it all happened, I was going to, I was going to either choir or band, which was on that end. But after it all happened, they made an announcement in the school saying there has been an incident. The police are at you know a certain location at the building. If you can stay away, that was that was all that I remember being said. But um, it it was just I don't know. It was kind of weird. It was. You know, I heard the the shots. I know a friend of ours, David Nash, said he was in the parking lot in his car and he heard the shots. But he he didn't. I don't think he left his car. I think he just stayed in his car. But I mean, it was it, like I said. It was just to watch that. I've never seen a shooting before, especially when somebody was killed. Um, so it was just like, I, I just froze. There, there was a teacher, I don't know who it was, that came from upstairs, because the stairs went up to the second floor. And I think I remember saying, her, it was a, a female, she said, what happened? What happened? You know, kind of hollering out. And then she saw David laying there on the, on the porch or whatever you want to call it there. Um, and so, I guess she called the police, I assume. I don't know, because like I said, I was just in total shock, you know, just standing there just thinking, wow, I just witnessed this. And the interesting part was when the police did arrive, they interviewed me. And, you know, I can re just remember the officer coming up and saying, son, what exactly did you see? And, you know, I told him what I saw, but I never had to go to court or anything. And it was, it was quite interesting it just um, it was and they you know back in those days they didn't have the crime scene tape and all like that it was just there it was um, I'm sure there were people coming from the parking lot because like I said it was during lunch period or right after lunch period so they may have seen it I as soon as I went around the corner I just I just stood up against the wall and just like oh I can't believe I saw what I just saw how long did you stay there just standing there <sighs> probably about 15 20 minutes something like that um, because Shaking? I was, and, and, and it was right, the police did come up, I mean, pretty quick. And the one officer, I guess he saw me standing around because I was up against the wall like this, and that's when he interviewed me. You know, he's like, what did you see? And I told him what I saw. I saw Gerald like that. Two shots, three shots, five uh, shots? It was probably five shots that I remember. Yeah, it was just like, I, I, and I think he had a revolver, I think. And I, I'm almost positive he emptied it. I just didn't count the rounds, but it was m multiple rounds. Anything was said? Do you remember anything being said between the two, two, two young boys? Somebody, I don't know for a fact, but somebody said that he had written a paper that his English teacher may have seen. And from that paper, they should have picked up on what was going on because I think he kind of described what was going to happen. And then, you know, it happened. So that was the odd part, now that I think back on it, is like it, it was no big deal. You know, okay, somebody got shot, somebody got killed, but classes went on the schedule. Nothing changed. We didn't lock down. We didn't have therapy people come in and say, do we need to talk to you? What did you experience? Are you okay mentally and all like that? We didn't have that, or not that I remember, but it was just... Um, Business as usual. I don't want to say that we were tough back in those days, but 
and we were caring people. The school cared. But I think the, the, the faculty just said, you know, we need to continue on with the classes and that hopefully that will keep your mind off what just happened, you know, your studies and all like that. But it was just, again, it was kind of strange that they didn't lock down, well, not lock down, but cancel classes that day. So 